Good day, Africa, and welcome to African Student Voices. And today, I'm a sitting host for the regular host of the African Student Voices show on AU TV. And I'm sitting in because we are covering live from University of Ibadan, where AAU is the official media um, of the pedagogical leadership um, training going on here at the University of Ibadan. And we are privileged to spend time with one of our PhD students here at the University of Ibadan. And he will be telling us what um, the student experiences are in the University of Ibadan. Don't forget that we've already um, interviewed academics and then we want to hear the voices of the students as well. You can join the conversation via our social media platforms, Association of African Universities on Facebook and AAU underscore 67 on Twitter. You can also catch us on our TV um, website, www.tv.org, um, aau.org. I think I didn't get that right. My producers will just do the correction. Let's go for a short break, we'll be back. You may not have heard about us, but we have heard about you. You've been searching for a new kind of university that matches your ambition. Our world-class education is renowned, but there is more to us. Meet the university in Ghana that is transforming Africa. One that is nurturing a new generation of ethical, entrepreneurial leaders. One that offers scholarships thanks to the Massacre Foundation so that you can be part of our community of students who stand for integrity, discipline, and excellence. There is only one such university, only one, where 100% of graduates receive job offers or graduate school admissions. You may not have heard about us, but we have heard about you. You are Africa's future, and we are Ashesi University College. Together, we can begin to create a new Africa. Welcome back from the break, and if you just tuned in, you are watching Africa Student Voices, and I'm sitting in for the regular host of that TV program, and I explained to you earlier. And we are privileged to be spending time with one of our PhD students, and he was one of the beneficiaries of the AAU grant um, that is an internship grant run by the Association of African Universities. Joshua, you're welcome to Africa Student Voices. Thank you very much, Joshua. Great. So we want to give you the opportunity to tell us who you are and the entire continent. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Joshua Akintayo, uh, currently a PhD student of the Department of Political Science, University of Ibadan. I had my first and second degrees from this great institution. Mm. Uh, and a third one here? Yes, currently. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's all. I think that's basically it. All right. Uh, I, my research is on um, conflict violence, on state society relations within the context of conflict and violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. Okay. So, the first question is it that University of Ibadan is the best university you've come across that you don't want to do either a second <laughs> degree or a third degree in any other university on the continent? There are a lot of universities on the continent. Yeah. Why University of Ibadan? Uh, there are two, I, would, I would like I would only say there are two universities in Nigeria or in Africa, University, University of Ibadan and others. The rest. Okay, yeah. we get to hear that tomorrow. Of it. <laughs> yeah, so, mm. well, um, I would say proximity, one of the reasons, mm -hmm. and um, maybe because I've been familiar with the terrain, mm. I, I find it more comfortable here. Okay. So, so, so like I've not explored, I've tried some universities in South Africa, but I wasn't given the admission, so to say, so I just, I just pitched my tent here. Okay. Permanently. So you want to go out your out of your comfort zone? Well, I wouldn't want to say that. Mm. I wouldn't want to say about it just my comfort zone, but I want to explore that part of Africa. Mm -hmm. Like I, few experience I've had with um, some academicians from um, other parts of Africa in this conference have shown that from other parts of Africa also do East okay. Africa, West Africa, mm. even Southern Africa. Mm. So that I also like if the opportunity comes I will Okay. So then let's let's start from um, going to school or schooling in, in Nigeria. How is the feeling like schooling in Nigeria? First degree, second degree, third degree? Uh, it's been an interesting, it's been an interesting experience so far. Mm. Uh, the part of Nigeria we are in now is like the most peaceful part of the country. Mm. So uh, I, would, I would say it's like having the best experience. Okay. And also, this, the western part of the country is the home of western education in the country. Mm -hmm. So, if you are opportune to school in this part of the country, 
you are assumed to have the best okay. education. Super. So, you can enjoy every bit of it. Okay. Every bit of it. Can be compared to other part of the country. Not like I'm trying to rule them out, but mm -hmm. everybody knows the world of Ibadan mm -hmm. when it comes to it's not like Ibadan is a cradle of learning and education in okay. Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, so. All right. Then let's let's just move deeper, finding out more about University of Ibadan. Um, what makes their teaching and learning uh, practices so distinct from the other universities? Yeah, Ibadan has a um, best set of staffs mm. academically. Basically, the academic staff, non academic staff, I can't really say because I've not had so much of an experience with them. Okay. When it comes to academic staff, Ibadan has best stands. And the students, the student staff relationship in Ibadan is splendid. Mm. Something that you can. Uh, everybody would love to enjoy at one point in time. Mm -hmm. So, Ibadan is, Ibadan is, Ibadan produces 60% of every other um, staff that teaches in other part of the country. Okay. So, you have like the home of um, academics in Ibadan, mm -hmm. and Ibadan exports them to other part of Nigeria. Okay. So, I mean, well, there's, there's no, there's no best, better thing than having first hand experience from people that mm -hmm. have knowledge before they pass it down to other part of the people. So, Okay. Ibadan is, Ibadan is best education wise. Yeah. Well, okay, so then apart from the teaching learning, what makes the graduate of Ibadan different from the others? <laughs> because then, when you enter into the university, it's not just only about academic work. There are other things that come together to spice up your life. Um, what, what are those other things that make a graduate from University of Ibadan different from the others? Yeah, I would say just like the, the um, the mission of the school, yeah, it's the mission of the mission, I'm not so sure now. It says um, being found worthy in character and learning. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, like you mentioned earlier, it's not only about learning. Mm -hmm. Character wise, I think Ibadan has the best mm -hmm. graduates. They are not just taught to sound academically, mm -hmm. they are they have values instilled in you that would make you be a better person even in and out of school. Like we will say, you pass through school and the school will pass through you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the points that makes it outstanding among its contemporaries. All right, so what would you change if one day you become the vice chancellor of this university? What things would you put right? What things would you change for the better? I think uh, it will concern um, the student union mm -hmm. school and how the administration handles student issues. Okay. In recent years, we've not had the best of um, mm -hmm. relationship with the administration. So, if I'm given the opportunity one day, I think I will pay more priority and attention to how student issues and student welfare are handled in the school. That, does it mean that um, University of Badan is not student friendly? Yes, or that student. leadership is not student friendly? Listening to the plight of students, listening to the, uh, the grievances and the, the, the requests of students or something. We don't create that common platform for them. Investors about is student friendly, is um, as a listening is, but it's not as much as one would expect. Uh, in recent times, it's not as much as what we had in the past. Okay. We read, we read from history books of how student issues were handled in University of Ibadan, how student welfare and priorities was like top on the list of everything that the school does. But in recent times, we've not had the best, mm -hmm. which is why I said earlier that if I'm given the opportunity now, I think I would like to mend that broken relationship, so to say, mm -hmm. and um, make it more like what we had in the past. What are the issues? <laughs> Why do you think it was better in the past, but now it is not? Yeah, in the past we had stories, and even some of our teachers would tell us uh, they had free meals, they had the best of relationship with their teachers, they had um, welfare in the hostels were good, mm -hmm. and um, so, so sort of good things, but now, uh, just recently, like I said, uh, student union was proscribed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more like the student does not have um, uh, a voice to speak for them at the higher level. Mm -hmm. So I would say there is sort of broken relationship between our Yes, but what, what really caused the broken relationship? Was it because of the fact that the student leaders were not trustworthy? Was it because of the fact that they were not complying to management directives and so management had to just kick them out was there any problem is there any problem now well if i say that i would be biased but i would say from my perspective mm. um 
the management has not handled the um, issue of um, student leadership and administration so well. Mm. Yeah, we see as youth and as students, we want to show our exuberance sometimes. Yes. But I feel there are better ways of um, handling issues like that mm. rather than just prescribing and going the, the military way of, or the tutorial way of um, suspending and rusticating and prescribing unions. So uh, uh, it's it's is um. Can see you are, you are just trying to be diplomatic with your <laughs> with no, your answers. Yeah, no, not so much, mm. but. It's. I think. I think if they had handled it in a more matured way, way okay. probably um, achieve the common ground, which mm -hmm. a compromise between both, rather than going the extreme way. I think we would have had issues of broken relationship. Before, in 2010, when I was coming into the university as an undergraduate, um, the student union was reinstated after years of mm -hmm. um, being prescribed. And the vice chancellor there, the current minister of health, was had a splendid relationship with the students. Okay. So despite the fact that students, um, some students, so to say, were not um, were not uh, respectful in their relationship mm -hmm. with him, mm -hmm. he still didn't undo, still didn't go the extreme way of handling issues. Okay. But immediately after we left, we saw a I mean a change of pattern in the way the administration was held. Yeah. The mm. union wasn't proscribed immediately, the old vice chancellor left. Mm. But then, some issues were not considered taken like That's why I said the current administration has not performed excellently well so anyway, in terms when it comes of, to okay. But um, I, I seem to get that this problem is not peculiar to the University of Ibadan, yes. but there are a lot of universities in Nigeria. Yes. Because I was here October 2018, and then I organized a leadership and the management uh, training for university lead, sorry, student leaders in Nigeria. Okay. And these issues came across, that the administration seemed not to um, give room for students here, and they, they see them as, as rivals or enemies. So now they are even taking the G out of the, the student union. You know, it used to be SUG. Yeah. They're taking the G out SU. because of what happens. Yeah. What, 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 what is exactly the problem? Is it that it's a culture in Nigeria where there's a, there should be a gap between the adults and the young people. Yeah, I think it's, it's partly due to the fact that it's, it's what happens up there which mm. goes down to the lowest level. Mm -hmm. Most political leaders in Nigeria do not take any form of dissent whatsoever. Okay. They don't like to be tapped, mm. quote unquote. They don't like to be confronted. Okay. So I think it's merely a reflection of how this Nigerian society is structured mm -hmm. from the highest level to the middle level and then to the lowest level, which is a reflection of the university community. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a reflection of how the Nigerian society is built. Mm -hmm. Nigerian president is not the person that would take lightly any form of dissent or confrontation against him. Mm -hmm. So it's more like what's happening up there that mm -hmm. our leaders are seeing that want a reflection of this. So it's a structure and reflection of the Nigerian society, so to say. It's not okay. something that's peculiar to the University of Ibadan alone. You see the incidences of student union prescription, Students being suspended everywhere. Back in Awolo University, mm -hmm. University of Benin, University of Abuja, University of Lagos. You see reflections of that everywhere. It may not be as terrible as what we have in University of Ibadan, but you see glimpses of that everywhere. Mm -hmm. Which is, like I said, she used to say that the Nigerian society is reflecting every sector, every sphere of our life. Okay. So what do you think are the challenges, the common, the baseline? Because you remember, every university, the student leaders are going, are having agitations left, right. They are talking about. Um, sanitation, they're talking about water, they're talking about electricity, they're talking about Wi-Fi, yeah. almost all of them. Is, is, do you think these are the issues or there are deep-rooted issues that may not even come out at all? Yeah, the issues you raised are like the basic issues. Mm. Now, going deeper, one, would mean, one may not know if the leaders and the administrators have personal issues with the student union leaders. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the basic issues are just basic. Provide, make the hostels comfortable, mm. provide Wi-Fi, give us lights, give us water, provide the ID cards that have went due. So are not issues that any leader should find um, confrontational or dismissive. Are, are, are they deliberate? Is it for a fact that there are no resources to cater for these things or the leaders think these are not important? I think it's more, it boils down on the selfishness of the leaders. Mm -hmm. 
because I mean the books are now so open that you know how much university generates, you know how much university gets from the federal government. Mm -hmm. Even on the school fees, when school fees are released, you see how much they give, how much is allocated to provision of Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. water in the hostel, ID cards. So it's so open that every student has access to how or what's coming in. Mm -hmm. So it should not be an issue where leaders think this is secretive again. Mm -hmm. Once the books have been opened, you should not hide these things and hide it, keep in the closet from students. Okay. So I think some administrators and leaders have deeper personal issues with the student union leaders that we may not know. Okay. But the basic issues that everybody's clamoring for, I mean, this should not be issues that mm -hmm. uh, administrators and university leaders should find Okay. Now, uh, uh, everybody sees a Nigerian or a young person in Nigeria to be very assertive. Is, is that the case? And due to the assertiveness, sometimes if they want something, they want it immediately now. And if they don't get it, the next action is a looter, riot, everything. Yeah. Assertive, yes, yeah, to some extent, may be correct. But resorting to a looter and riot, I don't think so. I think most students and youth are pushed to the point of a looter when after so much, after dialogue has broken down, okay. and after the leaders have shown that they are not willing to hear, they're not willing to have listening ears, mm. then they have no choice but to resort to. But outright aluta and rioting, no, it's not in our culture. Yes, we are assertive. We want our rights. Mm -hmm. As I went you. But then, nobody wants, nobody, I've not seen a student union leader in, well, in just very bad mm -hmm. that resorts to violence and aluta competition outright. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, because I know you are just starting your academic semester. Yes, um, starting why? in June. June? Yes. Which you should have been on recess by yes. now. Because of a long strike, about six six months. Yes. And it's because of some of these yes. issues. But let's let's move on from University of Ibada and move deeper into other issues bothering young people in Nigeria. To you, what are the, the basic things that a young person in Nigeria wants? I know you question for two months. Mm. Give us power. Give us... Let's have employment. Mm -hmm. Stop intimidating and harassing young people. Use of security forces. Mm. Provide employment. Just give us a stable life. Make the society conducive for us. Mm -hmm. Give us health facilities. Give us motor roads, hospitals. Mm -hmm. So pa power in a sense that you want young people to be part of the administration of, uh, of the country be in the political space or power as in Nepal giving you electricity? Both. <laughs> yeah, both. So, okay. Okay, but, now, mm. the first one, um, opening the space up, political space up for young people, mm. I think something that has been on the list for a long time and was eventually, um, leaders, the National Assembly leaders eventually gave an air to it. Mm -hmm. They, I think the last year, the not too young, not too young to run bill, okay. was eventually passed when, um, People within the age of 25 or 30, I'm not so sure now, we are allowed to contest for political offices. Mm -hmm. We went to assembly, went to the gubernatorial, and we had we saw examples of that in the last election in February mm -hmm. 2019. Mm -hmm. At the presidential level, we saw young, young, young folks in that age range come out. Mm -hmm. They contested, though they didn't win, but they still made attempt that. Then power, in the other sense, is something that most entrepreneurs, which are basically within the youth age range mm -hmm. asking for the 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 power power sector in Nigeria has not been favorable to their business at all. Okay. Most of them are about to survive on the tiny form of power, mm -hmm. which is so expensive, mm -hmm. and which is affecting product the, the output in the long run. Mm -hmm. So those major issues are being on the front burner of youth agitation for a long time. Okay. We'll go for a quick break and when we come we'll be looking at the quality of Education Nigeria and then also on research as a research student. Right. Viewers, we are still watching African Student Voices and I'm the sitting host for the regular host of this show. We'll go for a short break. Keep watching. One of the universities set up in our pre independence era, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Our international reputation has and continues to soar as a reference point in matters of science and technology, research and education. We believe that the future belongs to those who have sound technology acumen. I love USD. 
I love Kanye West. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. If you just tuned in, you are still watching African Student Voices brought to you by the Association of African Universities, specifically on our AU TV channel. And we are spending time with our PhD students here at the University of Ibadan. So Joshua, let's, let's move on into the quality of Nigerian education. Um, what, what do you make up of the quality of uh, your education system? Because I know you have friends, you interact with a lot of them outside the continent or even outside the country. What do you make of your educational system? It's not encouraging. We should be doing better. That's very straightforward. If you say not encouraging, what must what, what is the state now and what must change if you want to do better? Funding education and funding research in Nigeria should be improved. Mm. We, if we want to develop as a nation and get to where other nations, even on the African scene and Western world are. Mm. We need to look into what they've done and something I've noticed is they commit so much funding into their education and research. For instance, take um, South Africa. South Africa commits so much into research, funding, education and we've seen the results come out. But Nigeria also does the same because you have these tech funds, you have the government and in terms of school fees, um, comparatively your fees are very, 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 I won't say low but very, very affordable. Okay, you see the tech fund mm -hmm. funding on paper. We don't actually but in see. practice it doesn't. Yes. So there's a gap between the theory and practice of mm -hmm. funding, like you see. Mm -hmm. And so to say, even even the amounts dedicated to education on the yearly budget is not encouraging. It's not as it's not within the stipulated twenty six percent UNESCO mm -hmm. recommended. So we still see the gap. Funding is not encouraging university research is not funded in Nigerian universities. Mm -hmm. The the little giant strides you see such as within the Nigerian educational sphere um, perform is from the little funds that they are giving. Mm -hmm. Imagine doing such great wonders with such little paucity of funds. How would we perform if we are giving the amount of funds and um, mm -hmm. uh, money other countries are giving? I mean, you, 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 won't, you, you will see the result of it everywhere. So like I said earlier, funding is not encouraging. Okay. Like, our school fees may be low on paper, but funding is not encouraging. We still have to face some of those things ourselves. Okay. But in terms of infrastructure wise, um, do you think universities in Nigeria are up there? Um, every university that you pick, let's use your university as an example. Do you have all the basic things that make life on university campus very comfortable and, and enjoyable as well? We don't have everything. Okay. We don't have free internet at mm -hmm. universities. Sometimes we power not on any part of the campus. The free, the, you you if you enter university by now, and you put on your Wi-Fi, mm. you see connections displaying on your phone. But the problem is connecting. Okay. So most like those things are just there as figurehead. There are passwords on. Isn't it there are passwords on it? Yes. Or you even, you try to connect but it's not working. They are even passworded. Even if you are given the opportunity of having the passwords, you still have problem connecting. Okay. Because like I would say, the bandwidth of most of these networks are not so wide to accommodate mm. the wide range of people we have on campus. So, like I said earlier, most, some of those things are just figureheads. Mm -hmm. They don't have the strength to do, to accommodate the large number of people we have. Okay. So, infrastructure-wise, we are not there. Some of the hostels don't have water. Mm. If, you are, if, you, if, you, if you are opportunity to go into any of the hostels in we have on campus here, I bet you won't want to use any of the toilet to even use yourself. Mm. So then how, how do students do just simple research? Um, if, not even the postgraduate, the undergraduate, if they want to just search for something. That means you have to buy your own data Yes, everything. A every, like I said, everything we do is through our post. Mm. We have school fees for, we have allocations on the school fees receipt for all these things, but you still find out that buying data, subscribing for this, that, still from your post, still from the little you are giving to survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And even from little, you still find that some students still do extraordinarily well, mm. perform do wonderful research. And you begin to ask yourself, what exactly is the government doing for you? Mm -hmm. What exactly are you benefiting from the government? And then they will tell you his office is low compared to other universities and that as a defense. But I mean, it doesn't add up. Mm -hmm. When you are deprived of the basic amenities that you need as a student to survive, you won't expect the students to give you the best. There's a common practice in our university here. When it's very close to exam period, power is cut off. 
Mm -hmm. So how do you survive if you don't have access to Wi-Fi or internet? You don't have access to power. You don't have access to water. You don't have access to portable or affordable accommodation on campus. How do you survive as a student? <laughs> Like every Nigerian will tell you, Nigerians have a very strong shock absorber. <laughs> so, okay. I think we, we've learned to survive in whatever situation we are in. Okay. Whatever little situation we are in, we will survive. No okay. matter how bad it is, in the state of Bali, yeah. we've, we've been, our mind has been construed and developed to that point of surviving whatever many resources you have. Mm. Okay, then let's, let's go back to something which is very critical. You know, Industry players keep on saying that the students coming out of the universities are not employable. I don't know for the, the I don't know the case in Nigeria, because but I know that there are a lot of people who are unemployed yeah. in in Nigeria, and the conversation is that the students are not employable. Is it a matter of curriculum, or the fact that industries are not expanding to absorb the students who are coming out? Is it a matter of the students are not qualified to work, or there are no jobs at all? Uh, it's amalgamation of different factors. Mm. I want to hold on some of the points you listed. One, our curriculums are somehow outdated. Mm -hmm. They do not accommodate the latest trends in world best practices. Okay. Um, on the other hand, some students said you go to the school, school goes to you. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the mistake most students make is you they tend to rely on what the school gives them solely. Mm -hmm. The place of personal development is is not given priority. Okay. And for those that have gone through the personal development, that have expanded their reach beyond what the university teaching them, there is no job. Mm -hmm. Employment thereby is dead. Mm -hmm. So you see different factors playing a part okay. in people saying most Nigerian graduates are not employable. The ones that are actually employable don't have jobs to take them in. Mm -hmm. That's why I see most people resorting to entrepreneurship now mm -hmm. in business and all. You now I see most people really love to be entrepreneurs. They actually yeah. no jobs for them. So. All right. So I think when they get jobs, and I, I agree with you, I, I hold a very, uh, I don't know, a straight um, opinion on the way we are talking about entrepreneurship in Africa. It's just because there are no jobs. And so yeah. what happens is when they find jobs, in, in the near future, they drop all the ideas and everything. Is that the same in Nigeria? Yes. You, there are, there are very few real entrepreneurs mm. actually forfeit all jobs and the academic conditions they are But man, let's face the reality. I spoke mm. with friends. They don't actually tell me if they find real jobs, they drop their ideas and mm -hmm. just pursue their careers and move on. Okay. So if you're a leader one day, what will you do? Uh, that's a tight one. I would, well, I wouldn't queue an idea to develop an idea. Mm. I wouldn't rub it out to people. So, we'll strike a balance between both. Create the jobs. Quite difficult to create. Create the jobs. Um, no, how, but you see, we always say create a job. How do you create a job? If it is just as easy as we say, the government would have, because I believe that it is on the heart of the government to create a job. But our, our government are not being sincere. We know there are jobs out there. Mm. This government is not being sincere. Not being sincere at all with the jobs. There are jobs out there. Mm -hmm. There are quite a lot of jobs out there. Okay. What kind of job do you see out there? Uh, yeah, that's even the problem now. There are um, few companies and industries that are still left in Nigeria, because mm -hmm. they don't have gone because of the whole economic environment. Still have places for jobs for graduates that can prove their worth. Mm -hmm. But then we are in a climate and a situation where the few jobs that are there have been handed out to the government cronies and their children. Okay. So there's this place of connection. Mm -hmm. You must know somebody to know somebody yeah. too. So we have serious job racketeering everywhere there. Mm -hmm. And I, I am of the opinion that you're, you are privileged to have somebody who is a politician who is connected to somebody. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be just in for the few job openings that are there for the common man. Mm -hmm. Why not just probably start up a business idea mm -hmm. that will even open up jobs for other people that are not as privileged as you. Mm -hmm. Or you just I don't just don't just come to the level of the common man to struggle for jobs for them. Mm -hmm. You know the country is so tight enough that even to get jobs without connection is there. So when I'm talking of the few job openings that are there and you still see people from um, the top 
class of the society, the upper middle class, mm -hmm. that still there just need for jobs for people. It's not, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Okay. It doesn't make any okay. sense. So then, in terms of the development of Nigeria, how do you think Nigeria would be able to tap into its resources in diaspora? Because I think in Africa, you, you I, I'm not saying this on, on fact, but I'm just hypothesizing okay. that Nigeria may, may be the country with the highest number of um, di diasporans. Because yeah. every country you go, you find, you find Nigerians there, and yeah. not just one, two people, but in their numbers. Yeah. How do you think that Nigeria would be able to harness or kind of uh, tap into its resources in diaspora to develop it, the, um, the, the country? Yeah. Um, most Nigerians you see outside the country may tell you they won't come back because of the environment. Mm -hmm. Not because they necessarily love what they are doing there. The environment here yeah, is not welcoming, it's not conducive for them. So if the environment, when I say environment, the environment in our space here, yeah, social, economic, economic health, political, political, is major accommodating and Security. Yeah. I mean, we're not asking for too much. These are the basic things that they are enjoying there that is making them stay there. So I think if if those those basic things are handled and given the right priority mm. and um, attention, you will see most people come back here to develop the country. Okay. And even the returns, most of them that make returns via the, um, the foreign diaspora funding now, mm -hmm. the, there was an investigation a time ago and where they, find, they found out that most of these accounts, most of these returns are not coming, they are not going into the right hand. Mm -hmm. They actually been misappropriated. Appropriate job, yeah. Yeah, so if they can be a guarantee for them that the environment is made conducive and the returns are going into the right hand, right hand to develop mm -hmm. the country, I mean, you will see us annexing greatly and to a large extent the good hand we have here. Yeah. So you are the president of Nigeria in some few years to come. What will you do right? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot here. Yes, I am. <laughs> what will I do right? Ah, that's a big one. Hmm. Ah, uh, rest of what's here. This is actually a very tight word. The system is so, so, so messed up. I have to take a long time for it to be correct. The system is so messed up. Because when you speak to young people, young people seem, and I've asked a couple of Nigerians this, that same question. We seem to know what we must do. But if you put it to them, if you are there, what will you do? I get the same reaction. You get the same reaction? Yeah, yeah. so what is the issue? It feels like system is messed up. If anybody tries to correct now, it's taking a long period of time. Is it with the people? Yeah, the, you know, we have, the thing is, every successful administration bastardizes the system. Mm. So, if you think it will take you four years to clean the mess that this current administration has done, on getting there, you actually find out that it's been taking nothing less than 16, 20 years mm. because of the kind of rust that has gone in the country. That's why I say, yeah, most people tend to have this optimism. Okay, but then you just give me four. When I come, I will do one, two, three, four. I'll fix power. You fix power? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Power is one major issue we have in this country. Okay. Uh, two. Health facilities are terrible. Road access? Health facilities, Health. medical facilities. Yes. Okay. We have people flying out of the country for, even our president is a medical tourist. Mm -hmm. He's everywhere. a medical tourist? See. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, he's a medical tourist. Mm -hmm. um, and then three? Uh, I'll, I'll fix refineries in Nigeria. The finers? Refi refineries. Refineries, okay. We shouldn't be importing our food in this country. Mm -hmm. We are so blessed to that. Mm -hmm. I'll fix refineries in this country. Even this one. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's working well. And what the final one? Uh, maybe because I'm a youth. I'll open the space up for youth in my illustration. Thank you so much, Joshua, for coming. It's a pleasure. And it's, it's a pleasure interviewing you on African Student Voices. We wish you, you all the best in your PhD studies. Thank and then we'll be following you maybe one day. You will have to solve the problems of this country. Hopefully. Thank you so Jay much. Thank you. Viewers, thank you so much for watching. My name has been Kusi Sam, and I sat in for the regular host of the African Student Voices. Thanks for watching our programs. <laughs>